And with the inter-Korean summit now over, focus turns to the North Korea-U.S. summit. It's a meeting said to have been agreed to by President Trump against his advisor's wishes. And there's concern about a lack of preparation, not to mention the possibility of one or the other side walking out. Our Kwon Jang-ho spoke with the former U.S. ambassador to South Korea, Kathleen Stevens, who shared her thoughts on the situation. Ambassador Stevens, thank you for having us here in your lovely home. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Welcome to California. What has been uh, your reaction to the developments over the last few months? There is some argument that say Trump's attitude towards North Korea have helped these developments happen. Well, I, I think certainly this new and very unconventional, to put it mildly, American president has been part of the mix over the past year. Uh, I don't think anyone can say with certainty uh, what has uh, driven Kim Jong-un to make some of the decisions he's, he's, he's made over the last few months. But what we do know, obviously, is that he made a decision to open up a path which Seoul then uh, uh, embraced and, and has, has moved forward with. And now, of course, President Trump making this rather surprising and, and quick decision to say, all right, let's start at the top uh, and see where we get from there. What concerns do you have towards the Trump-Kim summit? I have that conventional concern that this is a summit that is happening without, if you like, the traditional preparation. You know, I've, I've been involved in many summits in different places over my career, and, you know, generally the, the, the notion has always been when your two leaders get together, usually you don't want too many surprises. You know, you've worked out the deal pretty much. This is very different. And when you have two leaders meet without things kind of set, it's got to be a fairly broad framework, and then you've got to implement, and then you've got to implement, and that's going to take time, uh, whether it's... Uh, uh, shutting down nuclear programs and getting inspectors in, whether it's uh, getting to work on, on resuming some economic and energy cooperation. And I worry about, I guess, shortcuts. You know, what if there's a deal that maybe satisfies some core issues of America first, but that is not taking into account the security concerns in Seoul or Tokyo? Currently, there is no ambassador, mm. U.S. ambassador in South Korea. Especially as an ex ambassador, how much of a concern is it for you? Well, not only as an ex ambassador, but as a former American diplomat, uh, I am very concerned about the, the weakening uh, and, frankly, just the lack of staffing uh, in diplomatic positions in general. And we feel it, I think, particularly keenly when we're looking at an issue like Korea where something unprecedented is about to happen. A sitting American president has said that he's going to meet with the leader of the DPRK. So you, you kind of want to have not only your, your A team in place, uh, you, you want to have a sense of continuity. And that's the other thing that you hope that over time, you know, your senior officials and diplomats provide. How important is South Korea's role in this situ current situation? One of the things that I actually find most uh, significant and hopefully encouraging about what's going on now is that uh, the Republic of Korea uh, has played such an important role as a catalyst and as a shaper. But with that comes a lot, some risk and some responsibility, too. And I think it makes it all the more important that Seoul and, and Washington have the best possible communication, frankness, coordination of their efforts, because uh, we do have to be mindful that uh, it's a very common strategy in any negotiation to try to wedge drive, to try to split. And, and we do have somewhat different perspectives, but we have to make sure that we, uh, we stay together, because I also think that's another kind of fundamental principle of making some progress uh, on these longstanding issues of reconciliation and peace on the Korean Peninsula is that it has to be very soul-centered and it has to be very centered on the alliance. Thank you again for your time and your insights and let's do hope for the best for the summits. The world is watching, yes. Let's hope for the best. Thank you. Thank you.